Good morning, my grandchildren and my friends from afar. I'm getting a late start today. This is a long study. This uh, chapter 32 of Jeremiah, the great book of Jeremiah. But uh, what an insightful and uh, brilliant, uh, brilliant chapter. Uh, dear Lord God in heaven, please watch over us, Father, as we read through your scripture, Father, and keep us out of the ditches, Father. We love you, we need you, Father, we believe. Amen. Well, that being said, 32 reads, <clears throat> The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord in the 10th uh, year of uh, Zedekiah, a king of uh, Judea, and was the uh, 18th year of Nebuchadnezzar. Now, this uh, Bullinger uh, notes here brings our attention to this. Uh, we're kind of skipping around in time here in a lot of these, a lot of these books. And uh, so this uh, timing, uh, there's an appendix on the, in the companion, if you have one, companion uh, appendix uh, number 86. And I read through a good bit of that appendix. It's rather long. Hey, puppy. And, uh, and uh, it's good. Uh, there's some good reading in there. Uh, if you don't have a companion uh, a Bible, uh, I'm not familiar with appendix, you see the appendices back here in the back, and it, it deals with different things, different parts of these stories that may be a little uh, confusing, and it gives us some extra help. I suggest that uh, uh, that the uh, Companion Bible is a very good Bible. So anyway, we're, we're kind of we're skipping in and out of time here, and uh, that uh, appendix does a good job of explaining uh, what that, uh, how to make that uh, make sense for us. I don't think there are any mistakes in the in the Holy Bible. I think everything is just as it as it should be for good reason, but it just helps us understand. Amen. For then the king of Babylon's uh, army besieged Jerusalem, and Jeremiah the prophet was shut up in the court of the prison, uh, which was in the king of Judea's house. Uh, he had a he had a big nice house that uh, kings and he had a dungeon down there in the bottom of it. Well, hello there, little granddaughter. What you doing? How you doing today? Got your boots on already, huh? Nana said that I can wear them. She said what? Nana said that I can wear them. Too. You can wear them. <laughs> okay, with the great looking boots. Okay, go tell Nana sure. good morning, huh? Sure. Look at there. I don't have got sparkles in them. How about them sure. boots? Nice. You need a filling. I know, they're very nice. Great. Okay, go tell Nana good morning and give her a hug on that swing. And then uh, tell her Pop Pop's hungry. We're going to wait to get us. Can I be in the video? Huh? Can I be in the video? You are in the video. Say hey to yourself. When you're 30 years old, say something to yourself. Hi. <laughs> go tell Nana you better brush that hair. No. Okay. <laughs> okay, let me get back to what I was doing. I got to read. Morning, Good morning, morning, grandson. Mm -hmm. How you doing, bro? You look like you're still sleeping. Papa, get in the video. Yeah, it's hard to get up. Do you realize it's 9 o'clock? Y'all must have stayed up till 12 o'clock last night, hooting and laughing and giggling and carrying on. Did y'all watch the whole movie? Yeah. I woke up and... Okay. Um, um, let, I go get go tell Nana uh, hello so Pop Pop get back to his, the reading. So I can get back to reading you guys. <laughs> oh goodness, where was I? I love these kids. Um, was shut up in the courthouse of the prison, which was in the king of Judea's house. For Zedekiah the king of Judea had shut him up, saying, "Tell her we hungry already." Okay, good deal. Wherefore doest thou prophesy and say, uh, Thus saith the Lord. <clears throat> He's saying, What do you mean by telling me the Lord is telling you to behold, I will give this city to the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall take it. <clears throat> and uh, Zedekiah, the king of Judea, uh, shall uh, not escape out of his hand of the Chaldeans, but shall surely be uh, delivered 
into the hand of the king of Babylon and shall speak with him mouth to mouth and his eyes shall behold his eyes. <clears throat> he's saying, he's quoting everything that uh, Jeremiah said was going to come to come to pass. And he's saying, what do you mean by uh, making this a prophecy? Talking these things. And he shall lead uh, Zedekiah to Babylon. He's still, he's still quoting him here. <clears throat> and there shall be uh, until I visit him. Saith the Lord, uh, though ye fight with the Chaldeans, ye shall not prosper. And Jeremiah said, now Jeremiah's going to answer him here. The word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Behold, Hananiel, the son of Shalem, thine uncle shall come unto thee. He, this is the Lord telling the, Jeremiah this. Uh, uh, buy thee my field, that is in Anatoth, uh, for right of redemption is thine to buy it. So Hamamil, my uncle, uh, son, my uncle's son, he came to me, I guess this is his nephew here, <clears throat> in the court of the prison. He came to visit uh, Jeremiah in the prison and uh, told him that he's got this, uh, this land, this farm for sale. According to the word of the Lord, and saith unto me, Buy my field, I pray thee. Uh, that is in Antonoth, uh, which is in the country of Benjamin. Uh, for the right of inheritance is thine, and to redemption is thine. Buy it for thyself. Now this field was also had to do with the grounds that belonged to the priest. And uh, Matthew Henry makes a point that uh, he didn't want that to fall into the wrong hands. But this is all very, uh, uh, very, uh, what's that word? Uh, it was uh, gloomy. Because we, here we are, uh, we're occupied by uh, a foreign entity, which is really in, in spiritual. This occupation is by our carnal uh, self, our carnal sense of being. And... Uh, he doesn't see any light at the end of this tunnel, but uh, but the good Lord sending him this uh, this land means that uh, there's a future coming. Then I knew that this was of the word of the Lord. Uh, he knew that he should buy this land, and I bought the field of Hanamiel, <clears throat> my uncle's son, that was an Antonoth, and weighed him the money, even sixteen shekels. I mean, uh, 17 shackles of silver. Uh, that, uh, what I see is what uh, spiritually what this means to us. Uh, he's buying up the promised land here. He's, he's investing time and energy and money. It's what money represented, your time, your energy. And he's investing in a time that looks like the country is lost. He's investing in a time that looks like all is lost. This is what we do with this Word of God today. It looks like we're living in a completely lost, carnal world, doesn't it? And then it uh, don't look like a whole lot of people's reading that Bible, does it? Um, and how you feel when you read the Word of God, when you get out into that world with your friends and people at work, uh, how you feel with this Word of God, it ain't how it is out there in what we call the real world, is it? So uh, why do we keep reading this Bible? Why do we keep investing our time? Why do we keep making this purchase? Uh, because uh, we purchase, uh, we're purchasing this by our reading, by learning. Jesus Christ paid for everything on that cross, but we learn about that cross through reading this Bible. <clears throat> so I can see a distinct uh, likeness here for what we're doing here in spirit uh, as to what was being uh, given to Jeremiah uh, to accomplish here. And I subscribe the evidence get this now, and sealed it and took witness and weighed him the money in the balances. You ever never had to, you ever remember reading uh, Revelations talk about this Bible being sealed? Um, how we uh, make this purchase for ourselves, it's sealed too until it ain't someday. And uh, uh, let that kind of permeate in your mind about that being sealed. So I took the evidence of the purchase both, get this now, listen up, 
both that which was sealed according to the law and custom, and that which was open. When you read this Bible in the carnal, this Bible is sealed uh, to its spiritual uh, meanings and its spiritual implications. When you receive that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ and that Holy Spirit, this book becomes unsealed. <clears throat> then you start to read it again in a whole new sense. Here we got two parchments of paper here, two proofs. One is sealed, as the law requires, and one is opened, right? As grace gives it open. And I gave the evidence to the purchase unto Burak, the son of Nira, the son of uh, Messene, in the sight of Hemuel, mine uncle's son, and in the presence of the witnesses, that subscribed the book, think about this word we're reading, this book, of the par uh, purchasers before all the Jews that sat in the court of the prison. And I charged Barak before them, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Take these evidences, just like these words of God, thus evidence of the purchase of both which is sealed, and the evidence which is open. Now don't you think it weird we're talking so much about putting up these legal papers? These legal papers are a sign of something that's going on with us within our legal papers, which is the word of God. Amen. That they may be, uh, let's see, an evidence which is open and put them in an earthen vessel. Uh, we are considered an earthen vessel. We came from this earth. We're made of the earth. Think about what the good Lord made us out of. And we can see that these words of God we're putting in our earthen vessel right now, that they may be, uh, con that they may continue many days. When we read this word of God, it is to assure uh, that we can continue many days in the spirit, just as we're continuing in the flesh. And in a, hopefully we'll get many days in the flesh so that we can get good understanding of God's word. Those many days will continue through Christ Jesus and the price he paid on that cross. Amen. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, house, <clears throat> houses and fields and vineyards shall be possessed again in this land. Hello, revelation of Jesus Christ. Hello, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now, when I had delivered the evidence of the purchase to Barak, the son of Nira. I wish I looked up in my uh, in my uh, Strong's to see what that name Barak, uh, uh, what the edification of that name was. Uh, I prayed unto the Lord, saying, Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made uh, the heaven and the earth. Now, this is uh, uh, Jeremiah. He's praying to the good Lord. And now he's stating, he's giving God his props. He's giving God, he's talking about, uh, uh, thou has made the heavens and the earth. He's, uh, he is respecting the Lord. He knows who the Lord is. By thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing to do hard for thee. Why? Because God created everything. Uh, God's, uh, God is not bound by our understanding and our reasoning. Amen. Amen. Uh, he can mold and do with whatever he will. Every breath you have is by the good graces of the good Lord himself and none other. And uh, uh, Jeremiah is giving, uh, uh, keep saying giving props, uh, but giving of respect, giving uh, respect to uh, the Father in heaven. Thou showest love and kindness unto uh, thousands and recompense the uh, and recompense the uh, iniquity of the the uh, iniquity of the fathers into the bosom of their children after them the great uh, the mighty God the Lord of hosts is a uh, is his name great in counsel and mighty in work for thine eyes are open all the ways of the sons of men. God sees everything. He sees you good. He sees the bad. Everything about you, he sees. To give everyone according to his ways. He is the great judge. Amen. 
and according to the fruit of his doings, which has set signs and wonders in the land of Egypt. This is uh, the land of uh, the carnalness. Uh, this is why we escaped Egypt, his carnal. Even unto this day, and in uh, Israel, and among other men, <clears throat> and has made thee a name as at this day, and has brought forth thy people. He's basically going through the whole story again. Brought forth the people out of the land of Egypt with uh, signs and with wonders, and with a, a strong hand, and hath stretched out arm, and with great terror, and has given them this land, which thou didst swear to their fathers to give them, a land following, a land flowing with milk and honey. And they did come in and possess it, but they obeyed not thy voice, neither walked in thy law. Why? Because we, we give way to the carnal. This is what we do as a society, as a whole. But we always seem to find a way to give way to the carnal. They have done nothing of all thou commandments <clears throat> that thou commandest them to do. Now, we don't do what God tells us. God gives us the law. He gives us the word. And then what do we do? We do everything but. Therefore, thou hast caused all this evil uh, to come upon them. Uh, we deserve everything that we get, uh, everything that we've gotten in this world. But thank God for forgiveness and salvation on that cross. Amen. I like to always say, help us on the way. And that, that help is that cross. That is the revelation of Jesus Christ. And behold the mounts. They are come into the city to take it. Now look at these mounts. He says there are these mounts, uh, erections of earth raised by the enemy to overtop the walls. Uh, back then, they would, uh, they would build up these big mounds of dirt to where they can get up to the top of those walls. Why? Because if you put a ladder or something up there when you were besieging a city, they would just pour bawling uh, or uh, fire oil, uh, old oils and thing, tars that would be on fire, and they would pour it on them as men climbed up there. So they, they built these hills <clears throat> and to get up at the top of these walls where they could overtake a city. And then spiritually, this means today we've seen this for years. They was building these mounds to get over our walls, to take over our, our cities, our countries, by making stupid laws that, we, that uh, we just watched them do it. They wanted to pass a flag saying that you could burn, pass a law saying you could burn a flag, or pass a law making idiocy uh, uh, somehow uh, protected, like saying that men can claim that they're women, or now kids are claiming that they're cats and dogs, and you have to... Uh, by, by law, you can't offend them if they want to live in that world of idiocy and confusion. Uh, they've been they've been packing the dirt around our walls, uh, which is the word of God, to get over that for years, and we just watch them, let them do it. And uh, same thing back then, because you don't build that that hill of dirt in a day. This is something that happens over and over and over for many days. It's like. Uh, Kind of like, uh, I'm not going to get into that. Let's get back to the reading. And thou hast said unto me, O Lord God, buy thee the field for money, and take witness, for this city is given unto the hand of the Chaldeans. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. He ain't just the God of them that seeks him. He's the God of all flesh. And there is... And uh, and there anything is there anything too hard for me? He's saying, uh, God knows this plan from beginning to end. God is not confounded by time. He is the creator of time, so He knows uh, with this story how it's going to play out, and He's given everybody what they need uh, for we can reach this point of salvation. Amen. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will give this city into the hand of the Chaldeans. And into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. And he shall take it. And the Chaldeans that fight against this city shall come and set fire on this city and burn it with the houses upon whose roofs 
they have offered incense unto Baal. We've defiled even this word of God with our carnal hearts and our carnal understanding. God wants this book written in our hearts. He wants us to get him spiritually. So not just the carnal understanding, he wants spiritual. And poured out drink offerings unto other gods to provoke me to anger. We can do this even with this scripture here. Uh, we can turn anything into a small g God. All we got to do is understand it with our flesh and not our spirit. Amen. For the children of Israel and the children of Judah have only done evil before me from their youth. For the children of Israel have only provoked me to anger with w the work of their hands, saith the Lord. Their hands means carnal. Think back in that uh, those uh, when God was giving us those, uh, telling us how to uh, uh, make sacrifices to those animals. He wanted them to find a nice, big, natural, rounded rock to, uh, to to slay that animal, make that sacrifice on. He didn't want his tools. He didn't want man's tools of their hands to carve out a nice, flat, symmetrical-looking altar. He wanted it to be natural. Natural is spiritual. This is where we came from, spirit. And uh, he didn't want to, he provoked him to anger with the work of their hands. It's like when they made that golden calf. Uh, if you like movies, uh, The Ten Commandments with Charlton Heston is a nice movie to take a look at once in a while. Think about him. Oh, Aaron was a, was hammering and chiseling on that golden calf. That's the work of man's hands. And when we worship that, that's a small G God. For this city hath been to me as a provocation of mine anger and of mine fury uh, from the day that they built it even unto this day. Why? Because God keeps giving us instruction to reach him in the spirit, and we only want to reach him in the carnal. And this is why how we make God so angry. We refuse to see the word of God as a spiritual thing. Many people that uh, that come across these videos that uh, you know they that only see these uh, things in the carnal uh, for facts and precisely. Uh, this is uh, basically what I'm telling you. They see things in the carnal, but they don't see the spiritual implications. And we have to reach beyond that. We have to reach beyond that uh, that ability. To read and understand in the carnal and understand in the spirit. Uh, my fury from the day that it was built even to this day, and I should remove it from before my face. And that he does. The carnal is going to be removed from before his face, and nothing's going to be left but the spirit. Because of all the evil of the children of Israel and of the children of Judah, which they have done to provoke me uh, to anger. Uh, they, their kings, their princes, uh, their priests, and their prophets, and their men of Judah, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And they have turned unto me the back. He's talking about everybody here, the priests, the prophets. This is all in carnal. This is our brick and mortar four wall churches today that... Uh, Preach uh, so that they can receive money, but don't preach that they can receive investment in buying that land we were just talking about. It's coming to us in this time of darkness while we're in prison. This is uh, the, word, the reading of the Word of God and trying to get understanding. This is how we buy that land. And they have turned back into me. They won't read this book no more. They just want to tell cute anecdotes and stories and do feel good things that makes the flesh feel good when the soul is starving to death. And not they turn their back to me and not my face, though I have taught them, rising up early and teaching them, the prophets of God, the people that, uh, that uh, work in the spirit of the Lord, they get up early in the morning. Uh, they, uh, they start, you've got to start out the day with reading that scripture. If, if, if you grab the, sir, something before you grab your scripture in the morning, you're doing it wrong. If you grab for a, if you grab for a TV to check out what's on Fox News <clears throat> to see what's going out in the world, you're doing it wrong. The first thing you need to grab is this scripture. Make that your first morning fruits. Make that your first sacrifice. For they have not hearkened to receive instruction, but they set their abominations in the house. That can be news, that can be sports, that can be your hobbies, 
Uh, that could be preparing to get to, up to go to work. Uh, if, you're, if you're worried about paying the bills for your flesh house and you're not worried about building the, uh, paying the bills for your spiritual house by buying this piece of land we were just talking about that the God's instructing uh, Jeremiah to buy in making preparations for the later day, the later, latter times. If you're not making uh, precautions, uh, what's that word? Uh, if you're not making... Uh, Oh, I, it escapes me, but you know the word I'm trying to get at. If you're not making uh, provisions uh, for building this, this house, this Word of God's house, uh, if you're not doing that first and foremost, getting up early in the morning, you're doing it wrong. Uh, this should be the first thing you grab in the morning is a little bit of Scripture. You don't have to bite off much as long as you put Him first. That's what God wants. This is how you let God know that you're looking. Amen. Which is called by my name to defile it. This is what we do. And they build the high places of Baal. Anything can be the high places of Baal in our time, spiritually. It could be your hobbies, your work, whatever you put before God is a Baal worship. Which are in the valley of the son of Heminen, uh, to cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fire in the Molech. Back in the old days, they would uh, sacrifice their children uh, to this god Molech so that they could have good rain, so that they could crops would prosper, so that they could make their bills get paid, so they could have a good life. They would sacrifice their sons and daughters. And we say when we read these old stories, oh my God, how could people be so cold and cruel to do that? And uh, while we're in that understanding, we'll look to our little kids and say, okay, now go put your clothes on. It's time to, uh, it's time to go to baseball practice, or it's time to go to the mall and let's go shopping. And nobody's talking about reading the Word of God to them, worried about their very souls. Nobody's instilling them with anything that can save them in the heart and, and, and soul and spirit of Jesus Christ. We won't put that into our children, but we'll put all kind of nonsense about sports and try to tell them all the things that are important to their lives, only in the flesh lives. We do horrible things to our children in this world in our time just as we did horrible things to our children at that time serving our children up to Molech because Molech is a likeness for filling our kids heads up with the world and not with the spirit of the Lord amen which I commanded them not neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination uh, to cause Judah to sin uh, God said I, this didn't even enter my mind to serve your children up to a death. And in spiritual, this is saying the same thing about if we raise our children and we don't give them education about the word of the Lord and don't give them instruction and tell them what's important, which is that relationship with the Lord. If we, if we teach them how to be good ball players and good this and good that and good everything in the world, but we don't get around to teaching them anything spiritual, we're doing the same thing in the spirit. What is worse? You tell me. This flesh life is but a blinking moment in time. But a spiritual life is an eternity. Amen? Who's doing the worser thing here? And uh, now therefore, thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel, concerning this city, wherefore, uh, yea, say, it shall be delivered into the hand of the king of Babylon by the sword, and by the famine, and by the pestilence. We have all these things when we only see this word of God in the carnal. Uh, that sword, this Bible that we're reading right now, it is that sword. And only when we receive that revelation of Jesus Christ, when we hook into that Holy Spirit, uh, can any of this make any spiritual sense to us. Amen. Behold, I will gather them out of all the countries where other I have driven them. Now, this is not a, a geographical thing we're talking about. The people that are going to be gathered are all over all countries of this uh, entire planet. Amen. Driven them out in mine anger. This is the carnal. And God's going to get us back. And in my fury and in great wrath, and I will bring them again unto this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. And they shall be my people. This is when you have that revelation, that relationship with that Holy Spirit. Amen. And I will be their God. Until we come to that relationship and that Holy Spirit, we only see in the carnal. But when we have that revelation of Jesus Christ, we now see in the spiritual. Amen. And I will give them one heart. That's the heart of Jesus Christ. And one way. That's the way. Jesus says, I am the way. Can you hear what the book is saying? 
that they may fear me forever for the good of them. Fear is another word for revere. We have to revere the spirit of the Lord. Amen. And of their children after them. Make good the cause of Christ in your heart, and you'll also do it for your children because they will see that that's important. And also the prayer of intercession is always a good thing. Pray for people that you love that's not on board yet. Pray for them. Don't talk about them, how bad they are, how, how wicked they are. Pray for them. That's the best thing we can do for people that's not within that spirit of the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them. And do them good, but they will put mine anger, uh, but uh, I will put my fear in their hearts, and they shall not depart from me. This is what happens when we start uh, tapping into that spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, yea, I will rejoice over them uh, to do uh, them good, and I will plant them in the land as surely as my whole heart and with my whole soul. This is what God wants with us, to contact Him with our whole hearts and our whole beings. We have, to, we have to sell out. We have to sell out to the flesh and sell out, I mean, excuse me, we have to sell the flesh out and sell to the Spirit. This is where we get this relationship. This is where our life starts getting good. When we sell out, of our flesh and carnal understanding and go to, and go to the uh, spiritual understanding, that revelation, amen. For thus saith the Lord, like as I have brought all this great evil upon this people, so will I bring uh, upon them all the good that I have promised them. Uh, where is the, the walk in the carnal is a lonely, dark, cold walk in the woods at night. But don't worry. There's light. There's light ahead. There's help coming. And the fields shall be brought into this land, wherefore, yea, say, it is a desolate without man or beast. Now, I always, every time I read this beast, I think about the carnal state of man, because he's like a beast. Uh, if he doesn't have a soul growing inside of him, if he's not nurturing that soul, he's, he's about like a, an animal, kind of lost. He's just a walking dead. It is given unto the hand of the Chaldeans. Men shall buy fields for money. And subscribe evidences uh, and seal them, and shall take witnesses in the hand of Benjamin and in the place about Jerusalem, that in the cities of Judea, Judea, and in the cities of the mountains, and in the cities of the valleys, and in the cities of the south. Uh, here's the south now. We've been talking about this enemy coming from the north, right? But now these cities are going to be in the south. For I will cause their captivity to return, saith the Lord. Why the south? South is down low. The, the carnal uh, armies that are coming to destroy and take over our carnal state, they're from the north. They look down. And when you're in the south, you're looking up. You're looking up to God. Uh, that's a, a, much of this Bible is written in a beautiful, poetic uh, way. And if, uh, you know, back in the old days, man, the people of, uh, of uh, 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 Judea, they, uh, they spoke in Hebrew. And much of the Hebrew language is a beautiful, poetic uh, language, much like the American uh, Indians' language were beautiful and poetic. Uh, like a, a word to them didn't just mean a, a singular word, but it meant like a sentence or a paragraph even. Uh, they would name their children, you know, names. I, I say this all the time, but names having meanings in the Bible and all the confusion there is about knowing the proper uh, the proper name for Jesus and people seem to think that God is some type of school teacher that will flunk you for something that your physical brain couldn't grab on to this is not a test over the physical brain it's a, it's a test for the heart and to know the name of Jesus is to know Jesus' story and to know that that cross all of our, our sins have been paid for I digress what a long chapter man this video was long was it not Boy, if you made it to the end of this one, boy, I tell you, you've done something. And yeah, plus my reading was uh, hard this morning because uh, I didn't uh, sleep very well last night and I'm tired. And uh, it, uh, you know, when you get to be my age, you get brain fog and it's harder for you to grab on uh, words and remember certain things. And already the memories is getting so bad. Um, I'll be in, uh, one of those guys that starts to lose their memory. Uh, 
But hey, that's okay because uh, uh, when you have that revelation of Jesus Christ, uh, uh, things get better. You don't so much uh, rely so much on your memory no more. Now it's a, it's a thing that's un, uh, that's unsealed and unlocked in your heart. And uh, that made me come to uh, that thought about that those parchments being sealed, one of them being sealed, one of them being unsealed. <clears throat> How true it is with the Word of God. Our parchment today, our our purchase agreement that we can understand uh, that farm, that land of plenty that's over the horizon. Uh, one of them is sealed. That's the carnal. And one of them is open. That's the spiritual. Amen. Man, what a, what a powerful book. Grandchildren, if you are following along and reading these studies, I hope you guys are, are reading your Bible daily. I hope you guys are reaching for spiritual understanding. And if that spiritual revelation of Jesus Christ hadn't come to you, just hang on. Hold on. Do like that angel uh, wrestling that Jacob. When, uh, be like that story. Angel wrestling that angel in the night. You just hang on there. Don't let go of that angel. This is your angel. Angel means messenger of God. There's no greater messenger of God than his holy Bible right here. Don't let go of that messenger until he blesses you. That's what Jacob told that angel. And sure enough, he was blessed because of it. Even though it is, these are dark times. You're wrestling all through the night in the dark. Even though it's a long wrestling match. It goes all the way through the darkness. That light is coming. I promise you. Just bear with it. Hang in there. Stay with it. I love you. That's where I'll read these words to you in the hopes that someday you will click on these YouTubes and study the Bible would pop up. And uh, hopefully we can all get here together in this book. This is why I always like to close out these videos with saying, look us up. We're in the book. This is where we are. The heavens and the earth will pass away. But this word, it ain't going nowhere. It's forever. And then we can have forever within uh, this book. I love you and God loves you. Don't, don't ever forget that. Don't ever give up that wrestling match. And then uh, we'll talk at you later. Come back and read with us again sometimes, won't you?